Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. I was going to go over triangle numbers, uh, answer three problems, find the 16th triangle number. Which triangle number is 78? Find the 21st triangle number. So those are problems we're going to go over. This is in the branch of mathematics called sequence and series. And there's a few different ways to do this. One way is to draw out every possible triangle, but you can see how long that's going to take. So before we go over these triangle numbers, let me just go over a couple quick ideas in sequence and series. First, there's really three things in sequences and series. The first one is a set, even though we don't really talk about a set, we just call it sequence and series. And a set is really just a collection, like a collection of pens or a collection of numbers. There's no order involved. It could just be a collection, say two, one, five, six. A sequence now takes that collection and orders it. So now a sequence would be something like one, two, five, six. So the only thing difference between a sequence and a set is it takes that set and puts it in order. There's really no difference between this set, two, one, five, six, or this set here, six, five, two, one. They're the same set of numbers, but they are in different order. So the sequence puts the set in order, and then the series adds up every value inside the sequence. So if I want to add up the sequence, I would take all of the values in there and add them. One plus two is three. Three plus five is eight. Eight plus six is 14. So that's what a series is. And these are really big ideas when you get to calculus and you're looking at integration. These two things here, both the sequence and a series, are called a progression. And there's three ways to represent a progression. The first way is just a list. The second way is in terms of the general term, the value in the list, the number in the list. And then the third way is a recursion where you're kind of creating a, a list and a value based on previous values. That's what a recursion means. So let's go back to our triangle problems now and let's start by looking at it as a list. Started drawing this out right here. And you can see I already started running out of room. So these are called triangle problems because you're counting up the number of dots in the triangle. So the first case scenario, there is one dot, so there's only one value in the first case. The second one in the, se in the sequence would have three dots. The third one in the sequence would have one, two, three, four, five, six dots, because I'm adding another row on the triangle here. The fourth one in the sequence, I'm gonna add four more values here. So I add w one more value each time. So right, this would be plus two, plus three, plus four. The fifth one in the sequence would add one, two, five more, or 15. In the sixth, the sixth value in the sequence, I'm gonna add six more, 21. The seventh one in the sequence, I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to the previous term to get 28. Again, I can figure out the sequence by going plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven, plus eight. So the eighth value would be 36. The ninth value would be plus eight, plus nine, 45, and so on. Remember three ways to look at a progression. One's a list, that's what I have here. My first value is one, my second value is three, my third value is six, my fourth value is 10. And I don't wanna to have to write all of these out up to you know 78 down here. I could do it that way, or I could go all the way out to my 16th. I could probably skip using my pictures, but I could also look for a general term. And probably the easiest way to figure out a general term is just to figure out my third term is six, and start low here and see if I could figure this out. So my general term would be my third value at six. If I did my third term times four, 12 divided by two, that would give me six. Or four times five divided by two would give me 10. Or five times six divided by two would give me 15. So the general term here is whatever term it is, times the next term in the sequence divided by two. So this is a number value in the sequence, and then this is the output. 
So let's see if this works. So let's say the sixth term, I would take that six, plug it in here, right? Six would go in here. Six would also go in here because we're talking about the sixth term in the sequence. Six plus, I mean six times six plus one, seven. Six times seven, 42, divided by two would be 21. Or in this case, we'd have seven times eight divided by two, 56 divided by two is 28. Find the 16th triangle number. Well, that's saying N up here is gonna be 16. I'm just gonna use my general equation and go 16 times 16 plus one divided by two, and that's gonna give us the value. So I'm gonna go 16 times 17 divided by two and get 136. So the answer to this problem right here is 136. We go to the next problem, which triangle number is 78? So now what I'm saying here is n times n plus one divided by two is 78. I might be able to figure this out by just plugging in numbers. Maybe I'll start with 10 times 11 divided by two. That doesn't work. Uh, 11 times 12 divided by two. So I could do it that way and come up with the solution pretty quick. Or I could just use my algebra skills and cross multiply and solve for n. As I do that, I have the quantity n times n plus one is equal to 78 times two, 156. I have to distribute that n through the quantity there to get n squared plus n equals 156. Looking like a quadratic, n squared plus n minus 156 equals zero. If it's gonna work out to be an integer, I'm gonna look for the factors of 156 um, so that it'll give me one in the middle. So I'll just play around on a calculator a little bit. Uh, I'll do 156 divided by 13, it's 12, actually that hit it right there. So that's 12, so this is gonna be 13 and a 12, right? One has to be negative, one positive. The smaller one's negative, the larger one's positive. Double check n squared minus 12n plus 13n is positive 1n minus 156. I factored that correctly. So what that means is n could either equal 12 or negative 13. Negative answer doesn't make sense. So the answer is 12. So the 12th term in the series will equal 78. And we can double check that by plugging it into this equation. 12 times 13 divided by two should be equal to 78. And it is. All right, lastly, find the 21st triangle number. So I'm saying the 21st term in the series. So I'm going to plug it into the equation again. n times n plus 1 divided by 2. It's the 21st term, so I'm plugging 21 in there and 21 in there. So I have 21 times 21 plus 1 divided by 2, 231. So this branch of math, uh, sequence and series, is really a big idea as you move towards calculus. It's also really understand, um, you know, the direction that numbers are going. So hopefully this video is informative. Please post your comments below if you have any questions, and I'll try and answer those.